Hello and welcome to the studio. I'm Paul from Paul Ranson Art. Today it's repaint day. Back in December 2020, I painted the black seascape and the video quality really wasn't very good. I certainly didn't have a very nice camera or a decent microphone, so I thought, time for a remake. So sit back and enjoy me repainting this painting for you. Today I'm doing it on Prussian blue, so something a little bit different for you. Anyway, enjoy. Happy painting, people. Today I'm using a couple of one inch brushes, an older one and a slightly newer one, and of course a palette knife. I'm also going to be using a fan brush, a filbert and a liner brush. My paper practice canvas is painted with black gesso and I've allowed it to dry. I'll leave a link in the description so you can make your own paper canvases in future. I'm using Bob Ross Liquid Clear. This means I can have a nice wet canvas to paint on. For ease of use, I store it in this little airtight container. I can also keep my paint in the freezer. This just stops it drying out and I just have to warm it back up to start using it. Of my two brushes, I'm going to be using the slightly older brush. The one on the left is quite new and I'll put that to one side for blending. So, take the little pot of liquid clear and take a small amount out and I like to divide my canvas into four. I'll work on one corner at a time and I want to really blend this into the canvas well. Make sure you scrub it on. It's the reason why I use an old brush and then finish off with long, flat, even strokes. I want the canvas to be very thinly coated and you should be able to run your finger over it without leaving any kind of a, a trail. Check out some of the other videos I've done which show you how to test your canvas. I'm going to use that brush again and I'm going to dry clean it on a piece of paper towel. We don't want all that getting into our paint. I have a limited palette of colours today. White, Prussian blue and a dot of cadmium yellow but you could swap the Prussian blue and use another transparent colour like Thalo Blue or Elizabeth Crimson. I'm going to carry on with the old brush and use it to apply the Prussian Blue. This wants to be applied to the whole canvas and you want a reasonably good coating of this. I'm going to test my canvas in a second. You'll see the difference between the right amount and, well, maybe not quite enough. So, use your fingers because it's black and you can't see what you're painting. Take a little sample from there and a little sample from there and you can see a big difference. That one, well, a bit too oily. And this one, well, that'll make you happy. If you don't put enough on, then your whole painting will start looking quite grey. So I've covered my entire canvas and I'm going to finish it off with flat strokes again. Now I want to mark my horizon line. And for this, I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of the titanium white on the corner of my fan brush. A useful little tip is to actually use your finger like a peg. Measure out how much room you want for your horizon line. Mine's just below halfway and just run your finger along the lower edge of the canvas. You only need the very corner of the fan brush to touch and just to leave a little suggestion of where the horizon line needs to be. But it wants to be fairly level. That's not quite bright enough, so I'll just run my brush across it so you can see it. There we are. Nice, easy, simple way of getting the horizon line. I've switched to my new soft brush for this part of my painting. I want to take a small amount of titanium white, just a touch, and rub it into the bristles. I want to create a bit of a glow in the sky against which I can paint the moonlight. So about a third the way across and about maybe just under a third down. Start making little crisscross strokes and keep adding white to build up that glow. Add a little bit at a time so you don't over brighten it and blend it in to the background blue. And you can see here that Prussian blue color picks up with that white and just like magic you create this lovely aura in the sky. Blend this well. Blend it until you can't see where the edge of the blue stops and the light takes over. And finish off with 
soft flat strokes. Remove all the brush marks that you can. If you enjoy watching my tutorials, consider helping me by subscribing. Give it a thumbs up and make sure you ring the little bell so you get to see all of the new material I release. If you want to help me more, you could even consider buying me a coffee. Well, it's actually a tube of paint. Thank you. Now to add the moon. And for this, I'm going to use my finger. Just get a very small amount on the end of your finger and right in the middle of that aura, make a small round patch of bright color. Keep it small. You can always make it bigger. And it's much harder to get rid of it if it goes out of shape. I just add a little bit more white and build it up until you get it bright enough. And it doesn't have to be pure white paint. Do this in several steps. And when you're happy that it's the right shape and size and not too big, then we can soften it a little bit more using the nice soft brush, which I'm going to dry clean. This wants to be used with the sides of the bristles. Just gently brush into the center of your moon. This creates a lovely misty effect around the outside edge. Next, I'm going to go back into some of this titanium white paint, just a little bit, and it doesn't have to be particularly clean. I want to get a small amount on the corner of my fan brush. This is for my clouds. Now, go straight into the canvas and think about the cloud closest to the moon. It wants to be slightly brighter, so that's where I'm going to start. Go in with the end of your brush and just do little circles. Touch, flip, and touch, and flip. Don't try and control the brush too much. The looser you are, the better the clouds. And let the paint run out and move slowly into the dark area of the sky, over to the right. It's quite a magical experience creating clouds by not trying too hard. Let's soften them a little with this nice one inch brush and I'm just giving them a little tickle. Don't overwork them. They'll soon blend together and make one big mass. But I like to leave my clouds a little bit more, well, hit and miss. I think they got far more character this way. So just tickling with the corner of that one inch brush. When you're ready, add another cloud. A little bit more dirty white paint. And I'm looking here, like there's a nice little shadow here where the first cloud ran out. And that's where this one's going to live. So I can overlap one cloud over another. I start out close to the moon and then again work away. I'm still using lovely loose brushwork, not gripping my brush too hard. So there we are, two clouds. And give that second one a little tickle as well. I'm tempted to add a third cloud over here on the side. But I prefer to try and get you to look more to the right. So I add a much more shadowy cloud to the right and just the suggestion of a cloud or two right down on the horizon line, just above the sea. Keep those two clouds very, very subdued. And of course, a final blend, again with the side of the brush. The bristles are lovely and soft and you can see I barely hold the brush I just want it to kiss the canvas and I just pull the paint into the center of the clouds. It just takes that real sharpness away from our painting. Don't forget to stand back from your painting occasionally. There. I've designed it so that my moonlight is shining light on the cloud and in particular I want to draw your eye to this part of my painting. This is where I'm going to put 
my big crashing wave and I want it to go above the horizon line. Now, try to divide your canvas up into rough thirds and I want to make sure I leave enough room for my wave. It takes up more room than you would imagine, so allow enough space for the wave. So again, a little bit of dirty white paint, not quite to the center, just a little to the right, just there. That is gonna be the crest of my wave. Now I'm going to sketch my wave. I've got a little bit more titanium white paint on my brush and I want to get this at a shallow angle compared to the horizon line, not too steep. And this is the part of the wave which is building up. So it needs to have a little bit of a bump and a lump in it, so not too straight. I'll make it a bit brighter for you so you can see it more easily. Now for the part of the wave to the right of the crest. This first part I'll call the crash. It's where the water spills over and crashes to the beach. It wants to have a nice curve. Don't let it fold back on itself. Now for the top of the cascade. This wants to be a lovely looping stroke, lower than the crest of the wave, with a little bit of space to the horizon line. That gives us room for some background C. Now, check those angles. Level, right the way across, and that at a slight angle downwards. I'll make that a little bit brighter for you. The final part of my sketch is the floor of the wave. This again wants to be a slight angle, so not level, but just tip slightly. This is the point where the wave hits the beach and it wants to be at a very shallow angle, not too steep. Remember, this wave is in the distance. If you have this at too steep an angle, it'll look as though the crash is further away and the tail of the wave is too close. To help you visualize how a wave works, let's put on a few guidelines. So this is the part of my wave where the water is crashing over. This is the part of the wave where the water is being drawn back down the beach and turned over and dropped back on the beach again. And the center section is the eye of the wave. Join me in part two, when we'll start working on the background sea. For more seascape paintings, watch this next. Happy painting, people.